we were talking about her her engagement ring and I was like oh are you so excited to get married and she said she really wasn't so excited to get married and quickly followed that with saying that she was actually sleeping with a black guy named Rodney. Okay, start with your name and your employment with HEB and the time frame that happened. In. Okay. My name's Alicia Slater and I worked at the HEB in Bastrop from 90, 1995 to 1996 before I graduated high school. I, I knew Stacy C. She was a year or two older than me and um, didn't work in the same department or anything. I was just a, the bagger and, and the cart girl outside mostly. Um, but we, we just knew each other through work and we had lunch together in the break room quite often. Proof of a pre-existing consensual sexual relationship between Rodney Reed and Stacy Stites would be a key exonerating piece of evidence in his case. For proving the relationship would provide a reasonable explanation to why a small amount of Reed's sperm was found on the victim. In fact, in a 2012 denial of Rodney Reed's appeal, Texas Court of Criminal Appeals Judge Andrew W. Austin wrote that Reed's claim of a consensual relationship is effectively the beginning and end of his assertion of innocence. Austin further stated that all witnesses to this relationship had been friends and associates of Rodney Reed and not of Stacy Stites, and therefore were unreliable. Finally, Austin wrote that because Reed's claim that he had an affair with Stacy Stites does not have credible evidentiary support, his claims of actual innocence is doomed. But what if such a witness existed? There was one instance where we were having lunch in the break room together, and it was just the two of us, and um, she pretty much was confiding in me. We were talking about her, her engagement ring, and I was like, oh, are you so excited to get married? And she said she really wasn't so excited to get married, and quickly followed that with saying that she was actually sleeping with a black guy named Rodney, and that she was you know, not sure what her fiance would do if he found out, and she had to be pretty careful about it. So she wasn't really excited about getting married because she was sleeping with a black dude named Rodney, she said. According to Rodney Reed's first lawyer, Jimmy Brown, there were multiple co-workers at Stacy's grocery store job who knew and witnessed a relationship between she and Rodney Reed. On everything that Rodney told me that happened, I was able to verify. In a 2015 affidavit, Jimmy Brown states when he returned to the store a week later, those same witnesses were unwilling to speak with him under a presumed threat from the Bastrop police. Witness intimidation and threat were two of the main reasons Rodney Reed's lawyers had difficulty establishing the relationship during the original trial. However, since then, 20 different people have come forward with their personal knowledge that the relationship indeed existed, including Alicia Slater, who moved to California shortly after the murder and did not realize until recently how important her information was to the case. At the time, I didn't speak up because I did know I had something to lose. I had my whole family still in Bastrop. I didn't want to, you know, have anything happen to them because I'm implicating a cop from the next, you know, town over. So, you know, I, I had big regret that I didn't come out in the beginning and say anything. And then I just didn't realize that what I had to say meant so much in this case because if that's what it came down to, yeah, they were having an affair. She told me. I thought more people knew about it as well. So, you know, it's... I 100% remember everything about that conversation, and she she was scared in a way, and then she was also super happy because she's sleeping with this guy named Rodney, you know, and I didn't know who Rodney was, didn't know who Jimmy was, so, you know, I have zero <laughs> affiliation to either one of them. I'm not a family member. I don't, all I knew was Stacy from work, and all I know is what she told me, and that's all I can, you know, I stand by my word with that. that. The fact that a 19-year-old girl would not want to volunteer information that could implicate a local police officer in a murder is highly understandable. And yet it underscores the major issue of witness intimidation in the case against Rodney Reed. So I just realized when I heard that it was still happening and that he was actually had an execution date set, 
I felt like it's now or never. I need to say something because if that was the only thing that convicted him, then I had no idea about any of the other stuff. You know, if just that was a reason why he was convicted, then that's not true. You know, and I, I needed to say something because Stacy physically sat there and told me she was sleeping with him. I never saw them together. I never saw him, but I knew what she told me. So I knew it, it had some implication in the case. In addition to Alicia Slater, Fellow H-E-B grocery store worker Leroy Yabera has stated he actually saw Reed visiting Stites at the store. And Stacy Stites' cousin, Buddy Horton, has sworn he saw the two together at a local Dairy Queen a few months before her murder. I just wanted to help in whatever way I can. So that still stands, you know, if I needed to come in and be a credible witness that had nothing to do with any of them, and I just happened to work with Stacy and just happened to talk to her in the break room, you know, that's... That's definitely something I'd be willing to do to, to help this, so. And, and you'd also be willing to take a polygraph test? Yes. Oh, yeah. I would be willing to take a polygraph test for everything I've stated. And yet, instead of pursuing this vital piece of evidence and seeking the truth, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals have completely ignored Alicia Slater's sworn affidavit. State prosecutors are now asking to execute convicted murderer Rodney Reed. With medical experts now agreeing Stacy Stites was not sexually assaulted. There was no evidence, absolutely no evidence in the autopsy or the findings of the photographs that she had been sexually assaulted. And multiple eyewitnesses verifying a pre-existing relationship between Stacy Stites and Rodney Reed. There remains absolutely no physical evidence linking Reed to the crime that he is now set to die for. Alternatively, there is an overwhelming abundance of evidence implicating Stacy Stites' police officer boyfriend, Jimmy Fennell, as well as clear indications of a cover-up by fellow police officers, investigators, and prosecutors to keep that truth from ever being known. The existence of a cover-up and those involved in it could be a key contributing factor as to why the state has refused to acknowledge the truth in this case, despite convincing and credible evidence of Reed's innocence. Which leaves the question, how broken is our justice system that it would move forward and knowingly execute an innocent man? And what could be done now to stop them? Jimmy Fennell Jr. is accused of sexually assaulting a woman he detained. He just kept telling me to shut up. He asked me to dance for him. Since then, there have been a lot of things that I've learned in that 20 years or heard about that have made me wonder if Rodney was framed. I remember after driving by, I thought, man, that guy could have killed Stacey just by the way he's acting. 